The havoc being wrecked by Log4j continues to this day. So in case you didn't hear about this already, Log4j is a logging tool written in Java that is very commonly used across applications all over the internet. And a vulnerability was discovered originally in Minecraft, which is also written in Java and uses this library to keep logs. And it had a feature that allowed an attacker to input a JNDI command, basically a specially formatted string of characters into the chat box or the console in Minecraft. And if that input is passed to the logger, it'll give the attacker remote code execution. So pretty much the worst kind of scenario imaginable, an attack that anybody's grandma can do that can easily be put into a malicious script that mass scans the internet for servers vulnerable to this and then exploits them. And since that can be easily done, of course it was done. At least 10 different kinds of botnets have been doing mass scans on the internet for log4j vulnerabilities and then adding the victims to their collective. So let's take a look at some of these. We've got Mustic and Mirai pretty much do the same thing. In fact, a lot of Mustic's code is apparently borrowed from Mirai and Mustic is also known under some other names. It's also known as Radiation or Tsunami. But both of these botnets like to add a backdoor to their target, usually in the form of an SSH key, which allows the attacker to log on to the victim's machine as if it was a remote server without even needing a password. The Mustic botnet in particular is also used for mounting some sizable DDoS attacks because of course, each computer that's under this botnet's control is connected to the internet. So if the person controlling this botnet wants to take down a service, they have a lot of bandwidth that they can use to do that, to overload any one service. And it can also be pretty difficult to mitigate those kinds of attacks because you don't necessarily know all of the computers that are under the control of this botnet. They're not necessarily going to have all of their computers be inside of the same data center or from the same region. It's gonna be distributed. It's gonna be all over the world. And I also wouldn't be surprised if the controller of this botnet or really any of these botnets sells DDoS on a service on the dark web since that is becoming really popular these days. We do know that they like cryptocurrency because another thing that this botnet Puppet Master has been doing recently is deploying crypto miners to its victims as well. So it's able to take advantage of the CPU, GPU, and the RAM power, as well as the bandwidth, of course, for DDoS attacks, basically taking control over all of the resources that these hosts have. Then there's Elknot, which was originally just targeted at Linux systems and was later upgraded to attack Windows platforms as well. And now it can target hosts using unpatched versions of Log4j. And then we have a bunch of different crypto miners uh, most of them are installing XMR rig, which as you can tell from the name is able to mine private cryptocurrency Monero, as well as a few others. And since Log4j gives hackers remote code execution on their victims, at the end of the day, there's really no limit to what can be done. They could use their victims' computers as a VPN to do some type of cyber crimes and mask their IP that way. They could use their hard drives as a personal cloud, or even install ransomware to the host and then encrypt all of their data and demand a crypto payment to get a key to unlock it. We also have a map provided by 360 Netblog of where these botnets are coming from, or at least where the IP addresses of these scanners that are looking for the log4j vulnerabilities are coming from, and this was detected by their distributed honeypot system. So by far, most of these attacks appear to be in Germany, followed by the Netherlands, China, and the United States. Then the number of scanners drops off significantly. We also have a breakdown of the ports that are being checked. Most often it's port 8081 in 31% of instances. And the second most common port to scan for log4j vulnerabilities is 8983. These are the default ports for the Apache Flink and Apache Solar Frameworks, respectively. 
But of course, you can run whatever you want on whatever port. So the botnets are going to eventually end up just scanning everything. They're going to scan those first two first so that they hopefully don't set off any security alerts that just notice, hey, somebody's scanning all of the ports on my system. Usually that's a little out of the ordinary and indicates that someone's trying to attack you. Now this particular vulnerability, CVE 2021-44228, which had a 10 out of 10 severity rating, which is not really that common, it does have a patch available for it for people who want to continue using Log4j, and it was released on Monday, December the 13th. And we can see in the release notes here that it disables JNDI by default because I think we can all agree that a logger resolving LDAP addresses by default was a really bad idea. And this patch also completely removes support for message lookups, which was necessary to mitigate this other less severe vulnerability that was just published yesterday. So this CVE, as you can see, it's not quite as severe. It's only 3.7 out of 10 and it's rated low, not as bad as that original log4j vulnerability that was caused just about everybody working in infosec to have to work last weekend and probably not get a whole lot of sleep but it does still allow an attack vector to ddos the machine that is vulnerable to it so again if you're going to continue using log4j on your systems you really need to be using version 2.16.0, which disables JNDI by default and it removed the support for message lookups, okay? If you're using 2.15, you're still vulnerable, even though it just came out earlier this month, you wanna definitely make sure you're using 2.16. And it would also be a good idea for you to keep an eye on this page on Apache's website, which is tracking the log4j security vulnerabilities, and it is providing instructions for mitigation. So the people that are using Java 8 or later just upgrade to that version 2.16 that I showed you. As for the people using Java 7, well, let's first just have a brief moment of silence for the people out there who actually think it's a good idea to have their service written in Java 7 and connected to the internet. Anyway, there is a version of Log4j version 2.12.2 that is coming soon, and once it's available, you could just upgrade to that to be patched. But in the meantime, it's recommended that you just remove the JNDI lookup class from the class path. But seriously, if you are still using Java 7. Stop it, get some help. There's not even going to be extended support for it next year. So just do us all a favor and please update your Java. There's also a bunch of different vulnerability scanning tools that are available that scan for log4j vulnerabilities on your host that are linked in this GitHub repo. So you could use those to take a look and make sure that you aren't vulnerable after you patch your systems. I'd imagine that a lot of the hackers out there and the scanning bots that are out there would be using some of these automated scanners or something similar to it. So at the very least, you can be secure against those more automated attacks. But you gotta make sure that you do this for all of your systems and all of the different programs and frameworks that you're using because there's a lot of them out there that use Log4j. I think on its official GitHub page, it has something like over half a million downloads. So it's, it's very prolific, unfortunately. And as you saw, the patch that makes it secure against these vulnerabilities was only just released this week. But anyway, I'll leave a link to this GitHub repo in the description of this video for you to check out. And that's it for this video, guys. Leave a like and comment to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.